calculation is elegant, but surely it cannot be applied to problems such as the enharmonic oscillator, where x to the fourth is always larger than x squared for sufficiently large x. And so no matter how small lambda is, your perturbation is not small for all values of x. You raise an interesting point, Sigredo, but the same method and objection applies to the study of atoms perturbed by a constant electric field, and yields results of which agree precisely with the experiment. I am sure there must be a simple answer to your objections, since nature does not lie. Prego, let me propose a solution of the hand waving pair that this is the central quantum. <laughs> Low lying states have wave functions supported at small x and are relatively insensitive to potential at large x. Thus, for these states, your method may be valid. Indeed, we see from the formula for the first order shift in the energy of the nth state that it behaves as lambdas, uh, lambda n squared, which, even if lambda is small, it will only be small for energy levels n, with n much less than the inverse square root of lambda. No problems with your method. Gracias, Segredo. Your insight is quite remarkable for a mathematician, yet I must confess <laughs> that your question troubled me to the point that I felt compelled to consult with a colleague of mine of impeccable mathematical credentials, and she has informed me that the nth order term in the perturbative expansion grows as n factorial. By the well known ratio test, this proves that the perturbative series has zero radius of convergence. It seems that your skepticism was well founded after all, and th that this method must fail for such problems. Math does not lie. Yet, you say, it agrees with experiment. Indeed, and this troubles me greatly, but a thought occurs to me. A finite radius of convergence means both negative and positive values of lambda uh, exist, does it not? And this would imply the existence of eigenstates and negative lambda, would it not? Indeed, you are correct, and it seems you have not forgotten everything from analysis. But this shows the problem with your method as well, for considering the following potential for negative lambda. Indeed, this reminds me of the fact that 
heard earlier but did not fully understand, the most precise agreement between experiment and theory in all of physics involves the anomalous magnetic moment of the electron in which experiment agrees to one part in a billion with the first four terms and the theoretical calculation of the coefficient of the divergent series. Got that wrong? 